Have you ever wanted a mower that's nearly the size of a ride-on that's battery powered, that's powerful enough to cut through this? Then stick around because this little beastie's doing everything I'm asking of it and more. Oh, this is heavy. <laughs> Instructions, packaging, something, something else. Hmm, tools look good. Oh, that's cool. Decent charger. Yes! Just while it's upside down, check out the blades on this thing. It's like a petrol mower. I'm used to these dinky little tiny razor blades. And that's not a sound I often hear from robot mowers. Removing the foam. Now I've just got to fit the tyres. Well, that's it. Unboxed and wheels installed, what do you get? You get the Rider with a battery, you get a charger, you get a remote control, you get a catcher system, and you get this packaging and assorted stuff that you've just got to throw away. Oh, and one bit of disappointing news, the tools that came with it, well, the Allen key was no good, it stripped after five bolts. Look at him go. The remote control gives you three overall speed settings with the fastest speed setting and full throttle giving you just a bit over 5 k's an hour. It's got infrared crash sensors on either side of the mower so to get through tight spots like this you have to turn them off but thankfully that's quite easy to do. The most important control is still manual. No stupid app updates on blade height. So the little mower is powerful, easy to use, does a neat job and can handle terrain. So far so good. The obvious question from here I think is how does this little mower cope with really steep terrain? You see the manufacturer claims a 70 degree climbing angle in forward or reverse and a 40 degree side angle before the sensors kick in and cut it off. So let's take it somewhere steep See how it copes with that. And that brings me to my first downside of this mower, which is transport. You see, this thing weighs about 56 kilos without the battery. I'm going to have to get myself a set of ramps. Okay, well this farm dam wall is certainly not 70 degrees, it's probably more like 45, but it's covered in dense weeds, brush and grass. So I think it's a really good mix of both worlds. What we've already done, which is heavy going, plus steep slopes, it's gonna give this thing a workaround. So let's get going. Ramp starting, please ensure safety.
So the secret with this job is not to try and cut uphill. The grass and the slope combined are just too much for it, despite its power. It's just lifting, the grass is actually lifting the wheels off the ground and it's breaking traction. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting downwards and I'm just going back up the cut area and cleaning up any little dags that are left behind. The really good thing about this mower is because it's got four motors, one on each wheel, you can really slow its speed and control its descent beautifully. And you can make good sharp turns on this bank that I certainly wouldn't be making on a ride on mower. Now this little thing is not supposed to be a slasher. Remember, it's a lawnmower. But I've seen slashers do a worse job on a bank like this, and I certainly wouldn't want to be on a tractor going up and down here, and certainly not across it. This one will do both. Starting. Please ensure safety. I'm falling in love. One of the unfortunate limitations of this mower is that you've only got a range of about 50 to 60 metres before you're out of range. I'd like it to be at least twice as large a range. It's a surprising limitation considering that I, my drone goes to about three kilometres. Yes, I know. All right, I'm going to go and get it now. Come on, home you come. So I guess what we've proven so far is that this little Rider can work like a slasher on the back of a tractor. It can go through very high grass, both on steep ground and flat. It can also cope with mud and it can also cope with loose dirt. I guess the question now is when we drop it down and treat it like a suburban lawnmower, how good a job does it do? Oh, of course. That means lifting this 60 odd kilo behemoth. Again, ramps are on the Christmas list for sure. So here we are, back to the start of the test yesterday on the lawn, arguably what this thing was designed for in the first place, and finally we've got around to it. Just before we try out this thing on the lawn and we try out its last feature, which is cruise control, it's worth pointing out a couple of observations. The first one is battery life. If you've ever been disappointed by the battery life of devices like lawnmowers in the past, I feel your pain, 10, 15 minutes and needing a recharge, not with this thing. Over the four hours of testing yesterday afternoon, on the dam wall, in the paddock, around the headlands, under trees, this thing only gobbled up 32% of its juice and its battery. It still had 68% left. The next thing that I'd like to talk about is something that I was pleasantly surprised about. You know how I had to turn off the collision sensors? Well, it remembered it. So every time I turned the mower back on, it kept the settings I'd left it with last time I used it, which is really, really important because if you've ever been frustrated by devices where you've got to go through a startup sequence, not this thing. One button you turn the controller on, one button you turn the mower on, 
Wait 10 seconds and it takes off where you left it. Now that is intelligent. First off, we'll mow without the sensors on, allowing me to get into tight spots I can't normally get into with the rod on. This is the first time I've ever had a robot mower that can get in here and cut this grass. But not the branches that have fallen off the gum tree. Grape starting. Please ensure. Credit where credit's due. It's a tough little cookie. This is a really neat little job around this difficult tree. I mean, I can't get the right on in here. Rightio, finally what most of you have come here for, let's cut some lawn and get the cruise control working, see how good that is. To do that, we're gonna to need to turn back on all of the sensors that we've turned off, because it won't let you put this thing in automatic cruise control mode unless it can see where it's going. Fair enough. So I go into settings, I go into safety functions, I turn back on the ultrasonic sensor, the collision sensor and the rear cover sensor, and you can tell already, it knows I'm here. Now we're right to go. Okay, so this is the bit where we try out the cruise control and I've been keen for this. There's one single arrow button right in the middle of the top of the controller. You hit that once the blades are going and the little robot continues in a straight line until you tell it otherwise. When it gets to the other end, you can hit the U-turn button and she should do a U-turn and point herself to come back in the direction that she just started right beside that cut. Then you press the cruise control button again and away she goes. So this should be a way of me taking it easy, sitting down on the lawn chair and getting the robot to do all the work. Let's see how it goes without GPS guidance or LiDAR. Blade starting. Please ensure safety. Cruise control. So far, so good. U turn. Cruise control. And it looks like it's missed a bit in the middle. And it's not in exactly the same direction, it's actually cutting a triangular wedge. That's okay, we'll persist. U-turn. Cruise control. Oh dear, now it's going off in another direction altogether. So the dream of unassisted mowing with the mow radar, not so good. Turn around. Now it's not turning around. Turn around. That's only because I hadn't done it before. Now it'll do it properly. Cruise control. So I guess the message is if you want fully automated remote control mowing of your lawn, get a GPS mower. So on slightly rough lawns, the cruise control doesn't quite give you what you need. You need to remain in control of the mower, which means you're standing out in the paddock anyway. Why not sit on a ride-on? So after a couple of days of use, final verdict time what do i think where do i see this fitting in etc well let's go over the positives first you've got up to two and a quarter hours of mowing time per charge in this battery and the whole of yesterday only took 32 percent of charge power out of the battery i refreshed it this morning 
the solid weight of the machine despite the fact that it's probably going to mean you're going to need ramps to move from site to site also means it gets good traction in difficult terrain and it doesn't get thrown off its cut very easily at all. I think that weight also makes it easier to control. Its speed is absolutely fantastic. You wouldn't need it to go any faster. In fact, to get a nice clean cut like this on a lower setting, I did knock it back a little bit with the variable speed control on the controller. You don't go terribly fast on a ride-on either if you want to do a good job. The cutting width is really good, really healthy, and it means that you get through the job reasonably quick. On the negative side of things, there's two things I really don't like about this mower. The first is this flimsy top plastic cover. It does have a good rain seal around it, so it is protecting your battery. But with the type of use, whether unintended or not, that users are probably likely to put this mower through. I think the plastic lid is in the most precarious position to have a piece of plastic. It should be metal or a light steel or aluminium. Also, the front bumper, it's perfect for soft, easy going places, but this soft cover on it has already been scratched and torn a bit by what I put it through yesterday, and I would like to see that replaced by some steel. So steel and steel, very necessary the thing already weighs 60 kilos what's another half kilo in terms of who's going to buy this and would they buy this does this replace a ride on mower i think with the way the cruise control doesn't quite meet the needs of someone to sit down when they're operating it i don't think this is going to re replace your ride on mower straight away where i see this fitting in is in dangerous situations where you don't want to be on the ride on like on steep banks or under trees where there's really difficult to access terrain will i be keeping this you bet your life I will. Will I be using this? Absolutely. So if you like this kind of content, don't forget, hit the little subscribe button and there's links to the Mo Raider in the description below as well. And guys, we'll see you next week with something else. So please do hit that subscribe button. It's completely free and it's helped support the channel mission in bringing you new stuff to view every week.